What's going on YouTube Nation? I'm the Coffee Bean Jam, and this is the third part for our mapping tutorial using GIMP. Now if you stuck with me so far, we went through and uh, created our land mass, created our water, um, we gave it some texture in the second episode, giving things a little bit of a life. Now in this episode, it's going to be a little shorter, um, because I can show you the techniques to use and how to set things up, but it's going to be up to you to really give this life and start uh, building this terrain. And you can do so however you like. It takes a lot of uh, time, a little bit of practice, and just kind of playing around and trying to get things like to how you want it to look and how you want it to work. So basically what I'm going to do is I'll show you the techniques that I use, kind of get it set up, and then the second half of this video, I'm just going to do a quick speed through. Um, you know, I'll, change, I'll increase the speed rate of the video and just kind of slam through the second half of it and then show you the end result of what I come up with. So it's probably going to take a good half hour, 45 minutes of playing around and tweaking the settings and how I want it to get it to look. So what we're going to do is we're going to be creating the texture of the land, the geography, the land mass part, you know, giving it some depth, some lights, and uh, kind of giving it that look of our real terrain. So what we're going to do, we want to hop over here, create a new layer. This one's going to be called Dark. Hit Enter. And then the same thing, another new layer. This one's going to be called Light enter. This is going to be the darker recesses of the landmass. This will be the lighter ones, the higher terrain. This will be the deeper terrain. So the dark, we want to change our mode to multiply. Okay, That'll give it a transparency and a darker appearance So when we start drawing on this. For the light, we want to change our mode to overlay. Again, add some transparency and it brightens it up a little bit. You want to make sure you use your brush. And I use the finest... Uh, I guess it'd be the one with the least hardness to it. This would be a higher end. But you want to use the smaller one. Um, we have a real tiny one up here too that works, but that one doesn't quite. This one has a wider radius that's softer. It starts out hard in the center and then it goes much softer. And that works for when you're shading our terrain here. So I don't know if there's actually a name for this one. Um, looks like it's uh, Hardness 25. So make sure you should, that's again, it's a basic brush that comes with the GIMP. So you should be good. So. For our darks, this is going to be black. So you want to just make sure you have the darkest color black and hit OK. In our light, you want to use the white color here. Make sure you're all the way on white and hit OK. It's going to be having to swap back and forth depending on what layer you're using. If you use this black on the light layer, it's not going to show up at all. And then vice versa, your white isn't going to show up in your dark layer. The other thing you need to make notice is you want to turn your opacity. This is going to be turned all the way down to a 10 like this. Now this is the opacity for your paintbrush. You don't want to change this opacity because this one is for your layer. Um, I guess technically it would work, but it's you kind of tweaking. You don't want to mess with the layer too much. Keep it right on your brush. That way each stroke adds to your opacity. And you'll notice if I uh, kind of go over this. Oops. Let me get up there. Again, that was on light when I'm trying to use a dark. I don't want to do that. So make sure we're on the dark. And we're going to draw a line. And you can see that dark line up here and each time we go over it it'll darken a little bit more okay and the same thing happens with the light as we kind of make sure we swap over we we'll use our white opacities at 10 we're on our light layer and the same thing it's kind of hard to see at first but once you go over it a couple of times it just keeps getting brighter and brighter okay so that way you can kind of play with some areas and give it a little life and see if you kind of starts to see this looks like little ripples in the land right here which isn't very natural or whatever but it's just an example so we're gonna get rid of all those little things there and start fresh all right and at this point it's almost up to you the one thing I would suggest is hit getting on your dark layer swapping over your black again make sure your opacity is good and on the areas of the map where the sun isn't shining, remember the sunlight or the light source is coming from this corner downward. That's why these areas are lighter and these areas are darker. I'm going to go over them all, or most of them anyway, with this brush on the dark. So this dark area, and you don't have to be exact because it blends in. Now one trick that I would highly recommend is right now, these will write on the blue. They are water. We don't want that right now. Now we do plan to add some depth to our water, but not yet. So, the easiest way to do that is to click on our grass layer, do alpha to selection, and then click back over to dark. We only want to focus on our grass area or our land mass at the moment. And this way, now it won't write down there, okay? 
So we're on our dark. We got our brushes all set up, so we're good to go. And I'm going to trace kind of around the corner here where our lighter or our darker light source is coming from. Kind of give it a little bit of shadow more. And you don't have to be exact because it uh, kind of blends in itself here. And then a little bit right here. Uh, some right in here. Kind of bring it down. And a little bit here. And let's see. Can add a little bit down here as well. Kind of bring it up. A little bit down here. Alright, I can give this one a little bit of a darker. This area is going to be kind of rising up quite a bit. So, now if I hit select, none. You see this is starting to give it a little more of a 3D feel. It kind of comes up. And uh, if I turn this light off, you can actually see that it's you know created quite a bit of a difference. Now we're going to do the same thing with the light side. Let me swap back over, so I'm only working with the grass. Click on our light, swap it over to our white. Opacity still the same, so we're good the light layer and we're using the white color and I'm going to follow the opposite sides here this area over here this is where our light source is coming from so we're just going to kind of trace it around nothing too fancy here yeah, I want this area to be a little bit higher looking though get in here uh, this area down here needs to be raised up Let's... and again we're just kind of giving a little bit of a 3D feel to it kind of bringing this to life a little bit and get right in there a little more. Let's raise up this lakes, these tiny little lake areas. And this one too. I like to have the lakes look like they're up a little bit higher. Give this one a little bit. And uh, I think we're pretty good there. So, um, give this one a little bit of light too. All right. So we're going to select none, get rid of those lines off there. You can start to see again, this is starting to raise up. And if I turn that light off, you can actually see the differences that I made. So that's what it was before, and this is now. And again, it makes it look like this is raised up. It almost at this point starts to look like this uh, green grass, this continent that we're working with is floating above the water. Now we're going to start adding depth to the water in a little bit, and uh, it'll start to fade back in and start to blend together much nicer. But if you're looking to create like a sky islands or something like that, then you could easily change this over to more of a cloud like grayish or whites or whatever, even use a cloud texture underneath this. And uh, if you darken in your areas and work with your beveling and your lighting a little bit more, then it'll actually look like it's floating right off. And um, I actually have a map that I did, I don't, I'll have to find it elsewhere, that I did as a sky island in uh, using textures drawn down like these areas here and creating rocky terrain and stuff. It came out really cool looking. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this video and kind of get through all of this. I'm going to start adding some textures. And again, it's up to you to kind of decide what you want and how you do it. I wouldn't go overboard at this point. You're just going to do it just enough to kind of tweak it and give it a little bit of a 3D point of view. But we're going to be adding mountains and forests and stuff like that. And that will further influence what we do. So, you know, our basics right now, we're just going to give it a little bit of a uh, 3D effect. Don't go overboard. So, bear with me. I will speed this up through, and then at the end, I'll kind of go over what I did. So, let's go. Alright, so you can see I fast forward through most of that, but this is what I ended up in the end. So we're going to kind of 
fade these out a moment here. So this is what we started with. Once I added in some lightness, you start to see the ripples start to form. And the darkness, when you add it in, really helps it pop. So it looks like we have ripples, land terrain, mountains, uh, hills, I guess if you will, giving this place a little bit of a life. Now, one thing you got to keep in mind as I go through and I did all this is our light source. So is it coming down this way? So when you add dark layers, as I did here and here, you want to use the opposite side and add a little bit of light. Oops, let me swap back over to white. And keep the light, you know, shining in that direction. That's what gives it that 3D point of view. So I'm going to kind of tidy up some few little areas here. Some areas a little darker than what I quite wanted. There. So, again, this is what we started with. And this is how we're ending it. We're getting a bit, of, a bit of life in there, starting to create some atmosphere. Now we're going to do the same thing with the water. The water is quite a bit easier, though. So what we're going to do is go down and do our alpha deflection. That way we only have our water. We're going to start with our dark. Go over. Now the deeper area of the water is more in the center. So we're just going to come in and just quickly kind of give an outlined area here. And then kind of give that a quick color. And you don't have to be exact because the water itself is textured. There's different depths the water so you just kind of give a little bit of rough nothing too fancy here and then we're going to do the same thing we swap over we're going to use the light and they're going to start blending a little just going to go over top of what we had here kind of like this now the cool thing about water that i like to do is this little smudge tool right here Take it. We're gonna crease that up a little bit, right around a hundred. About there. I'm just gonna smudge stuff a little. And just keep pulling. Every time you click and drag, it smooths it out a little bit and pulls it, smudging it. And you notice when I'm clicking and I'm pulling, I'm pulling it towards the landmass. That way it smooths it out in that direction. It's a whole lot of clicking and dragging, I know. Now this is why you need to make sure that you click your water one and you do the alpha to selection, because otherwise I'd be, as I'd pull in to drag this, be pulling this blue onto the green and smearing it, and we don't want that. And there we go, starting to get a little nice texture in there. All right. And then we're going to do the same thing with these other ones. So we're going to hop over, start with our dark. Oops. Make sure we're on our brush. We've got our dark opacities down. We're going to go onto our dark layer. And just kind of give a quick little area in there. And actually, I just kept the same size at the moment. It's easier. And our brush there. Yeah, kind of go like that. Get a little bit of light. Swap over to that. Give the outer edges a little some light. Uh, swap over to white, that would probably help. There we go. Again, dragging it, just kind of giving it towards the edge. It gives it a little bit of a beach sort of feel. Pull the edges in. I'm actually going to tidy up this one a little bit too. Alright, and once again, I'm going to swing back over to our smudge tool one last time. I'm going to smudge the dark and just kind of drag it in all the way around. And last part area here. That's easier when it's smaller areas like this one is compared to this big one. So I'm going to have to tidy up a little more. There. Alright. Now we're going to do select none. And there's our landmass. A little bit of texture has been added. We've added a little bit of depth to the water, making it look a little deeper, giving the water, or giving the land some terrain techniques and uh, some light, some darks, and bringing this place to life. So the next thing that we're going to be doing is actually going to be the next episode, but uh, we're going to get into using our brushes, uh, mainly our mountain brushes that are down here. Let me swap over. 
and actually I'll just show you on my other map here just as a quick example oops change my opacity up so you can actually see what we're going to be doing and we will be actually adding mountainous terrain and this map is just an example quick thing just to show with but uh I'm going to start giving us some map bringing some mountains onto this plant now uh, landmass adding some little forests in kind of like so and giving this place some terrain features some life so stay tuned for the second or I'm um, actually it's going to be the fourth episode of our little series here and uh keep on gimping guys thank you